Hello everyone. We are so glad you're here. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, pull up a chair around the table here at the For This Moment podcast. My name is Laura Matthews. And I'm Megan Sternhagen. We're two sisters and Regnum Christi women with a desire to share the beauty of the stories of God's kingdom in the lives of women throughout the world. Our prayer is that this can be a space to inspire and encourage you in your own journey as you walk day by day, responding to the Father who has called you for this moment. Welcome everyone to the next episode of For This Moment. Today we have two very special guests and we'll get into that in just a moment. But first we always just take a moment to see how how Megan's doing and um, just have everyone settle in and get comfortable as we get ready for this next beautiful story. So Meg, how are you doing? I am doing well. Thank you very much. I am still enjoying the lovely weather and uh, all that comes with it. Um, You know, birthdays and graduations and first communions, et cetera, et cetera. It's the season. Um, But I actually, I was thinking about this before we came on, like what I wanted to mention. And I actually wanted to give a shout out to a different podcast, which is called Saints Alive. I don't know if I've mentioned it already, quite possibly I have, but it is an incredible podcast for kids. Um, And they, during the month of May, are doing a series on Eucharistic miracles, which Mm -hmm. is so well done and so fun to listen to. Like, I, I was just driving back from Costco yesterday with my kids with like trying so hard to keep my like focus on the road because there's like this amazing Eucharistic miracle story going on all around me. And I was just like, wow, this is so amazing. So anyway, just uh, if you're listening and you want a way to make Euch- Eucharistic miracles come alive for your kids, I highly recommend this podcast. I love it. The kids love it. So anyway, we're we're doing a lot around the theme of the Eucharist, obviously, with this Eucharistic revival and the Eucharistic Congress and everything coming to our city here in Indianapolis. So it's it's all getting really real around here. So uh yeah, just revving yeah. up for that. So uh awesome. how about you, awesome. Laura? How are you doing? Well, we're when this uh, episode releases, we're gonna be in the month of June, which is the month of the Sacred Heart and the Immaculate mm-hmm. Heart of Mary. And actually the anniversary month of my spiritual consecration before I actually made my official consecration. So I had the grace in a CC on June 9th to make a spiritual consecration. So June is the month of love for me, really. It's a it's a very special month. So I'm just grateful to be able to to be Catholic again. I always say this on the podcast, but the different feast days that we have are just so beautiful and keep us so close to the heart of Jesus. So I'm, I'm just grateful to be able to, to be Catholic, to live this, this beautiful gift of the, of the different feast days and to enjoy this month of, of June. So as we, as we go through, it's a good kickoff for the summer. So, but we do not want to waste another second without uh, introducing our guests today. So originally Megan, Megan and I were thinking of for this moment as a space for Regnum Christi women to share their stories. And one Regnum Christi woman reached out to us, Jean, and she just said, I have a ministry with my husband. And I said, there's no way we are quenching the spirit. We're going to have Jean and Colin on to share their story. <laughs> and it's just such an honor to have our first married couple come on and to to just break open their story with us. So welcome. Welcome to the table, both of you. Thanks Thank for you. having us. <laughs> so Megan, do you want to yeah. do you want to yeah. tell them our, our little tradition? <laughs> yes, our tradition. It's a long standing tradition of like three months. But yes, this is our, our tradition here on our podcast because it's a virtual table and we're sitting around and having conversation. Um, we wanted to ask you guys if you could be serving us a meal right now, or if you, uh, either a specialty or something that just a family tradition, what would you be serving us as we have this conversation? Well, I had a chance to think about it a little bit because I was listening to your other podcasts and, uh, yeah, I think we agree on what we would want to serve, right? right. <laughs> So eggs Benedict uh, for the adults, uh, and then uh, waffles. Waffles. <laughs> waffles. That's what we do on Epiphany, and we have all of our friends over, and uh, all they have to bring is you know some something to put on the waffles for the yeah. kids, whatever their kids are going to yeah. eat. 
all the yeah all the guests bring the toppings and so every epiphany we have a big party and we've had up to like over 60 people in the house oh wow different years year to year but yeah we can fill the place up oh Oh, i love that (laughs) eggs benedict and waffles and i love the idea of bring the topping that your kids would like so that is that is such a good good tradition for us we get all the extra syrup at the end (laughs) it's a win-win win-win situation Oh, well, wonderful. So, well, because we have you on as a couple, obviously you want to hear your journey together as a married couple. But before we have that question, I would just love to hear how maybe individually each one of you first discovered Jesus as a friend and had a relationship with him. And then we'd love to hear how that intertwined with your marriage and meeting one another. Yeah, well, I was brought up in a very Catholic faith-filled family. I was my siblings so I'm the oldest of eight and my siblings and I used to joke about like when my father would start talking oh this is sermon number 239 or something like that we would just joke, like make up a random number but you know in hindsight I feel very blessed that he was so knowledgeable and my mother too but just me in a more uh, behind the scenes kind of way they were both very educated in their faith and very had a very deep faith and that doesn't mean I didn't have my moments where I kind of fell away but I think those those seeds were planted early on and so I think my relationship with Christ has been like a, a gradual growing throughout my life and my dad is also a Regnum Christie member so he introduced me to Regnum Christie when I was very young like still in my teens so I think that was one of the things that kind of really drew me back in I think that that structure and that um, the reverence that is there is really kind of drew me in and and helped me along on that journey and to be able to go to like these silent treats when I was so young just really helped kind of give me that sustenance I needed to keep mm-hmm. growing in my faith. Well, so your your dad must have been one of the founding Raynham Christie members in Canada, or was it? There were yeah. very few, and he like I grew up in Nova Scotia, so it, okay. there, like and and when we later became Reagan Christie, we were in New Brunswick. So those maritime provinces, like people would travel from all different like small communities to come together for for things. So yeah, and I remember he used to have some of the legionary priests come along. So there's actually a priest in Calgary, Alberta now who whom I remember like when he was still brother. So I have heard time. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've heard time. Well, not so much anymore, but at first I kept wanting to call him brother. Instead brother. Of and I was probably 16 when, when I met him. So wow. yes, it's been a blessing for sure to kind of be involved for so long. Oh. So you're originally from Nova, Sco- Nova Scotia and mm-hmm. now live in Calgary? Uh, in Edmonton area. Nepal Edmonton. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. And you, Colin, your story? Well, so I uh, I grew up in a Catholic household and went to mass all the way through high school. High school, the Catholic school system here wasn't uh, wasn't really producing, and I got I got kind of cold my faith. Joined the army, went away with the army, got involved in those things, and uh, fell away from my faith pretty much completely. Mm-hmm. Went to Saint Evax, met a great gal. Uh, and this is in Anaganish, Nova Scotia, uh, to go to university. Uh, which and, also wasn't which Catholic. also wasn't Catholic and was uh, kind of a fallen away zone. But I had some some good Catholic friends there, and through the through the the course of time, I eventually met my wife, and uh, so I had a I had a big experience there in coming back in, and I had all the arguments against the church because I decided whatever I was going to be, if it was going to be Christian, it was not going to be Catholic, and so mm-hmm. I would have these lovely long arguments with my father in law. I didn't know he was. Uh. My father. But like he was, he was so patient. Jean was away. She was at Franciscan and I've got this living away girlfriend. I'm living in the town now that she left and I'm in the army and, and, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going over and, you know, food and company and, and accompaniment and, and lots of good arguments and long arguments, some of them and wow. you know, fighting over St. Paul and fighting over things I didn't understand. And I, I thought I had all the answers of course. Right. Uh, I was pretty sure. Yes, of course. I was, I was not used to losing uh, and, and certainly not losing an argument. So uh, that was a bit of an experience for me. And uh, through some experiences there, I, you know, Jean and I in the course of time started, she she won me over. We were having some of the very first chat arguments, you know, in the world. Uh, dial up internet. Dial up oh, internet wow. chat arguments. Wait for the You've response. got mail. <laughs> realize eventually that this is not a good way to have an argument yeah why are you responding to me (laughs) 
So we were doing that in like the late nineties while she was at Steubenville. Um, when I was home, my father has a very extensive library and Colin cannot leave a book on the table if you put one down. So my dad and I would conspire and I'd be like, dad, he's asking about this and we'd find the right book and just lay it out somewhere. Nice, <laughs> nice. G.K. <So> Chesterton, <laughs> Hilaire Belloc and uh, C.S. Lewis and you know classics and then the lots greatest. of good Catholic writers, uh, John Paul II. Uh, and, you know, my mother-in-law played a good part in this as well, as did my grandmother. My grandmother was a prayer warrior right mm. up until I didn't really fall away until she actually died and then that only lasted a couple of years and mm. I realized how foolish that was mm -hmm. um so I came back in and we we're kind of casting about as we we're going to get married and I'm talking to my father-in-law quite naturally and saying hey you know you go away on these retreat things um I'm getting married maybe I should have a retreat he goes Friday be here Friday Boom. be there <laughs> like, and this is drive from New Brunswick where the army base is to Anaganish to go to this little town called Monastery, where there's a monastery. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where I met Father Kermit. And that's how that goes. So, wow. Wow. <laughs> it's a, it's quite, quite a journey. There's no I other bonding than that, but yeah, that's, that's most of it. Wow. There's no other bonding experience like debates, I think. <laughs> it's like you either grow very far apart afterwards or you get closer. <laughs> so, that's, that's that's an kinda, amazing that's, story. Yeah, kind of how we met was debating in a we met in a philosophy of ethics class, and you know it's a little argument that brought us together, I guess. So. <laughs> I, we were talking and things, but we weren't, uh, you know, talking uh, closely, and and we we kind of bonded a little bit over an argument because she's a little, <laughs> little little quieter and a little longer to jump in, and so I was with a bunch of goofballs. We're in a philosophy of ethics class with a great teacher, and he was letting us take like three hours in a summer session to, to, to really go over something. And we got to, we were great when we were practicing and, and writing and, and working and reading, but then we got to Kant and I didn't like him at all. And I didn't want to read him. And so I got behind and then I looked around and realized there's other guys like that. So we just decided to argue about something from a couple of weeks past, but Jean's a great student. So of course she had actually done the work yeah. uh, and, and she was a little annoyed that we we're just, she probably didn't even, she probably figured us out and said, okay, these guys are just arguing because they didn't do the work. <laughs> but an old argument, we're back on Aristotle or something because, you know, Nicomachean ethics, this is cool. Whereas Kant is not that cool. Not that cool. No. <laughs> so she, she blasted us and it was, it was unexpected and it was great. Very attractive, I'm sure. And then you <laughs> fell in love. There you go. <laughs> There's more to it, but yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's amazing to hear the the whole journey and and beautiful to hear how your father and your father in law had such an instrument, an instrumental role in that. So I think that also just shows the strength of parents in the lives of their children and the importance for for parents to be to be united to the vine, right? To be able to continue to bring Absolutely. bring the faith. And I love the phrase, um, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And I often think that that is my my grandparents, my parents, my, my dad always likes to say, he always likes to ponder who was the first uh, Matthews to hear the name of Jesus. And uh, in our family lineage, you know, which ancestor, probably some Irish druid somewhere, <laughs> you know, um, maybe a thousand years ago or more. Yeah. And, um, and he said, the only way that we're able to be Catholic today is because that, that ancient ancestor chose to pass on the name of Jesus mm -hmm. and pass it on and pass it on. So it's very evident in your story that, that you received from the shoulder of giants, right? So God is good. Mm. So our next question that we always ask after the initial question of meeting Jesus and um, having a relationship with him is, did you ever feel that he was preparing you for something, for your mission, gathering you and preparing you? And we would just love to hear, especially your story as a couple, how you how you came to to begin the ministry that you currently have. We feel like he's always preparing us for something or always like bracing ourselves. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think there's just all like having a big family and being in the military and moving around a lot and 
and all the things that have come in between, there's been a lot of struggles, but we've come to see those as God kind of strengthening us and preparing us for the next thing, whatever that may be. He doesn't usually reveal too far out like what that is going to be, but we've had enough time in to realize, oh yeah, okay, this this is all preparation for whatever the next battle or the next mission is, right? So how many children do you have? We have seven. Yeah, awesome. Cute little family. <laughs> yeah, just a little family. <laughs> Well, we're not ones to talk. We come like, I mean, it, 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 it's so, it's so relative. Cause sometimes I feel like we only have like two or three kids in our family. And then mm -hmm. I realize that it's very much not, but I mean, <laughs> I, I, I yeah. only have four, so I cannot imagine having seven. So thank mm -hmm. you so much for your generosity and being open to life. Well, I don't know if you've ever had that experience of looking at a picture of a family and being like, wow, that's a big family. And then I count them. I'm like, oh, it's the same size as ours. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You feel so big when you're in the middle of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's like watching for us. the way it happens, right? I mean, each time God makes our heart bigger and, um, you know, it's not even, not even six months in when you know the little baby and the little characteristics are starting to show up, you start wondering what the family would be without that person. Exactly. Right? And, and how amazing they are as a person. And that's what he's always done. He's always grown our heart. So and I, I think as far as this ministry, like I, we can look at it from different timelines, but I think you could say that he's been preparing us all along for something like this, right? For this time. And it's just been interesting how his, his military perspective and my, like as a psychologist, like I kind of offer that lens and then bring in our faith and how those three things really kind of meld together really well. Um, but I guess the idea came to me at, at mass, of course, one time, right? So I'm at mass and I felt like God was saying, rebuild my domestic church. And I'm like, mm. isn't that what I'm doing? Cause I, as a psychologist, I work, primarily do marriage and couple stuff so but it, the idea started kind of forming more from there and just this idea of having an online community where people could support each other in their marriages kind of came to me and and it, it didn't come until later the idea of involving Colin and I guess like he's retired in the last couple of years so it eventually became evident that you know, if we're going to do a marriage ministry, it makes sense to do it with my, my spouse and, and how much he had to offer because of his, his male perspective and the military perspective. Cause I feel like a lot of times wives will bring their husbands along to something, but they, they're not necessarily eager to attend. But I think this, like bringing Colin's perspective and the, just his presence as a male makes it more appealing to, to that side. Well, there's there's an interest in psychology in both of us. It's funny. She's the one who does it. But uh, uh, I I came to the ranks so, um, before I became an officer. So I was a warrant officer. And warrant officers in Canada were always joking about, were basically like bartenders or doormen or or maybe barbers. We're, we're always hearing the stories and listening to all the stuff, right? And so right. Uh, we're always fixing problems and, and doing so. So there's a there's there's a level of interest in people and mm. uh, so the doorman idea the the bouncer in a bar is always watching and I've done those jobs and and I was a warrant officer and I, I enjoyed the part where I got to help people mm. and and so you get interested in people's lives and you're uh, so it, it kind of leads into what I'm trying to do now with my business so it's it's a financial services thing and that allows me to try and help families to save money and things like that. And things that I wished we had when we were you know, going through as a young couple. Mm. Right. So it's, it's an interest in people primarily. And then, you know, there's a weird army perspective. If that's interesting too, that's, that's, that's fine. Right. Well, um, our, our church, the Catholic faith has that military perspective too. Right. And, and we are in a battle and, our marriages are, are under attack. So it's, I think it's just very timely. And I mean, obviously we've had that, that lens for a long time, but, but we really need it right now because there's so many attacks on marriage right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we are the church militant. So I think it's not, it's not a coincidence that, you know, you were in the army, Colin and Gene as a psychologist, it's really beautiful how God blended and molded you both together for this time, right? For this moment. And, um, with both of your love for people and their stories and helping people, it just, um, it just, I, I love hearing how people get to now, like how they, how they discovered little by little. And I just would also love to underline what you said, Jean, about rebuild my domestic church. 
I find that ex- incredibly moving that to think of families as a, the domestic church. Mm-hmm. And um, I recently was just pondering how we have the new feast of Mary, mother of the church that Pope Francis only recently instituted. Uh, and it is, I think, particularly beautiful for mothers and fathers to look at Our Lady as the mother of the church, as they are called to be the parents of their own domestic churches, right? In their homes. And uh, so, yeah, I just love them. The church militant, rebuild my church to the domestic church. It's just very ecclesial, your ministry. So, um, and probably our listeners are thinking, I, I, failed to uh, explain beforehand, but wondering what's the ministry called and what do you do? And I'm sure we're obviously put all the links in the show notes, but we'd love to hear. Um, so, so Jean, you heard the call rebuild my domestic church. And then did you begin the ministry and then Colin came on or did you start it together? Yeah, we pretty much started together it's still in its beginning stages. So I think that like the community will be called like Holy union connect. Um, but that's still building. So we've started with, with a course that we were offering. And so it's a six week course called Holy Union Blueprint. Mm. And yeah, that's kind of just come together in amazing ways too. And I'm, I never ceases to amaze me how deep the analogy of the military can go, but also just like, I it was kind of working with some Catholic coaches on this and, and they, one of them came up with this acronym for or well, used union as an acronym and so we have like understanding and navigating and and things like that in their ob- observation and it, yeah it just seems to really be covering all of the the areas that we we need to cover it just all kind of come together with in a way that it's obvious that the holy spirit is at, at work in that but um yeah so that's kind of our primary offering right now is kind of offering this this course to people and we've been getting some good feedback on that but the intention is to kind of build this community where online where people can connect and get support from each other and learn things and um one of the things that's kind of i guess foundational in this too is just my own realization of how much the church tells us about marriage that we we're not really aware of or is not as put out there right? like we we know that this is you know marriage is offered by god and it's a sacrament but it also says in the in the um, catechism that we will have a spirit of domination and infidelity and that we have to fight all these things right and we don't always keep in mind that the battles that we need to be prepared for so so i think yeah so that is also kind of really interwoven in this course mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I've always had a, a heart for young men in particular because it's easier for me, uh, although I have three daughters as well, and they're wonderful. But uh, young men and and wanting to see them develop as leaders, right, so that they can move forward. And that's why that's why I love a camp like Arcathios where you know they can kind of learn to use their imagination for some of that. Uh, and I also, you know, I really want to see some of these skills that we have passed on to uh to younger younger people and I, w- I would love to see a young couple be able to pick up some of these things and carry on so the idea of a blueprint comes from say a military planning process or something like that we have a lot of those so trying to translate those well gene and i were spitballing in the car where we normally do some long talks and uh, mm-hmm. uh, living in, in alberta it's a long way to everywhere right so it's <laughs> three four hours to calgary things like that so we can spitball in the car and, you know, take a couple minor notes on our phones and, and we can get some good ideas that kind of flow at that point. And once we get in the flow, it's wild things can kind of happen and the Holy spirit can kind of creep in and say, okay, well do this then. And, and it was fun. We had an acronym, we kind of played with the acronym and then we ran with it. And then we, it's been really fun to kind of just sit down and write and be, and find that we're in the flow for some reason. So God's obviously helping us mm. uh, and just, you know, that's fine. And, we get to we get to bring out some of the some of the analogies that help us in leadership analogies or or analogies of of you know things that you would do in the army in a battle. Uh, mm-hmm. So some of those things can help us to to orient ourselves for some of the spiritual difficulties and 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 the physical difficulties that we have to face. Uh, and it's been it's been eye opening to see how how much you know this has been aligned outside of our power. Like it just kind of happened. Mm. Uh, so that's that's been great to see that as well and it's kind of heartening and it's fun to be part of so we've enjoyed it and for us this is just like talking to another couple you know we're uh 
uh, okay, it's online and and that's a little different, but it's not it's not too hard for us, which we had no experience of this before. So mm. yeah, would you neat. would you be mentoring them then? Would uh, is that the the model? Is that the two of you would be mentoring? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. my that's my side when I'm working towards, but that's probably still a year or two out. So yeah, right now it's more like kind of us presenting things, and there is a time for kind of question and discussion, and we're kind of helping people to create their own blueprints for going forward too. Right enough, and with couples as, as we kind of approach the end of counseling, I might help them do like a, a maintenance plan, and so it's it's mm -hmm. kind of that idea like each like there's six weeks, five letters in union, so each like by the end we're hoping to help them draw something from each of those weeks that they can carry forward as a plan for kind of continuing to enrich and grow in their marriage. Yeah. Mm, that's beautiful. I love that. I think, uh, I've just been listening to you guys and obviously a young married couple here. So hello. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been married for 10 years, so I, I'm not brand new to this, but I'm still, still in the toddler years of marriage, I suppose. Um, but I think like, just how you were saying, like the Holy Spirit just coming at work, like we don't even know where this is coming from, but that that idea of um, having a plan, having a blueprint, the intentionality aspect, because I feel like for so many people, the greatest hang up isn't that they are actively working towards you know, destroying their marriage or destroying their children or whatever. It's, it's like the sleepy, not really paying attention to what's going on, just kind of going with the flow. Like everything's nice, you know, it's nice and it's, it's cushy and this is nice. And having to fight that battle to be intentional, it's hard. It's not comfortable. You know, as I expect, the military is also very uncomfortable at times. Um, it's it, but it forces you out of that kind of sleepy resignation to whatever is happening around you in society, in what your friends are doing, what your friends' marriages look like, or your family marriages, like having to kind of wake yourself up in that sense and say, we're not going to go down without a fight. We're going to take these steps. We're going to be intentional. We're going to be like, you know, that, that image that, uh, was very predominant, I think, especially in the early two thousands and nineties of the fish going, um, against the flow, like only dead fish go down river. Like we're going to go against the flow and keep fighting. That's kind of what was in my mind while you guys were talking. Yeah. And protecting yourself too, right? Like not even wait until you're in the middle of the battle, but like, you know, is your armor in good shape? Is is your mm -hmm. uh, fortress fortified? All that kind of stuff too, right? And just yeah. be, like you said, being awake and aware that, that we're in a battle and have to be ready. Mm -hmm. and, and preparation before we go into it. So, I mean, we have to expect battles and that's, uh, that's been said numerous times in the last 20 years on the Catholic net. So we're kind of getting the idea and it's, it's here now, obviously there's dif difficulties and discussions within the church and with the outside uh, and the Catholic Twitterverse is kind of nuts right now and all of that, mm -hmm. right? But we have, we have the ability to, to look at this and say, you know, we have to prepare for spiritual battle. We have to prepare for physical hardship. We have to prepare for a lot of things. So where do we start? And for us, it's always been every time we get, knocked off course and and knocked down we have to get up and uh we have to we have to get back into it and for us that always starts with prayer and we may not know it we'll try other things and then we'll come back and we'll be like looking at each other going what should we do oh, all right we'll start with prayer right and, mm -hmm. and then it flows right so it's mm -hmm. it's grace always grace and more grace i mean that's that's a family life every family i think but particularly in our in our ex extension it's been that way for sure in our experience so mm. every time we need something or we need to learn something it's been a matter of slowing down trying to connect with god trying to get his grace and then kind of moving forward from there there may be lots of other things that we have to do physically or or work wise but you know we have mm. to start from that from that one spot okay. start by connecting with the king yeah, the king. Yeah. Get your orders. Plan. Get yeah, your get orders, orders. And, and stand up and march. Right, like that's right? that's kind of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and 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 our entire world is trying to destroy marriage right now. It takes five seconds on uh, the internet or walking around. I mean, in this lovely month of June, uh, which has been baptized as Pride Month in the world, whereas I mean, we we 
do I mean it's been it's been the month of the sacred heart for so much longer like come on people but it's it does it only takes a few seconds to see that marriage is like the number one target that the enemy wants to destroy families so like some a ministry like yours is incredibly needed because you're giving like you said you, are you wearing your armor? Are you ready for battle? Because it's coming, whether or not like you think it's going to hit you now or in 10 years or whatever, it's, it is going to be a part of your life and your marriage eventually to be fighting actively. For sure. That's what Our Lady of Fatima said, right? That marriage right. is the, the last battle is there where, you know, that's just because you mirror the Holy Trinity, you mirror you mirror God's love. And it's actually so beautiful to witness. I know our listeners can't see you, but um, to witness both of you sitting there in front of me and how you're a team. It's so clear to see, you know, that the strengths that you, you rely on both each other, on each other. And Colin, as you said, you, 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 you look at each other, what should we do? Okay, well, let's connect with the King. Let's talk to God and then come back together. And then it's clear that you're making your battle plans together. And, um, and that, that is, I think, such a, a beautiful gift for for this moment for now because uh there's been a lot of ministries for women a lot of ministries for men but i think couple ministries and i sent the quote to jean earlier but i at some point i wanted to read the convention um the Regnum christie general convention just uh released the communique and they have a whole thing on strengthening pastoral care for marriage mm. and oh, yeah. um yeah it says as the basic nucleus of society and the natural place where the person uh, discovers themselves, develops, and learns to love. We want to structure. We want the structure of Regnum Christi to respond better to the needs of marriage, and its elaborate formative itineraries that accompany the vocation to love along all its stages and situations. So, and then it continues. But I just think how incredible that you have been connect connected to him. So, of course, he's going to inspire you with the same thing he inspired our whole spiritual family internationally in Rome. That the time is now to to launch ministries for for married couples and for couples to come together and to be strengthened as one one flesh mm -hmm. union. Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, I just think it's just, it's so inspiring to see it actually happening and unfolding, uh, right now. So that's so beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw that when it came out and I was like, Oh, wow, that should fit so that's well. Cool, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So God is, God is good. And, um, mm -hmm. I can all only, the time. Oh, all the time. God is good. That's right. <laughs> uh, Franciscan university and all those. I, it was actually Franciscan friars, the renewal that taught me that, uh, God is good all the time. All the time. And God is good back in the mm -hmm. late 1990s, early 2000s. So youth, youth 2000 retreats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so he, so you, you, uh, Jean, you listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You got Colin on board. And then um, he. when was the moment where you just said, okay, enough planning now. Let's just do it. Let's just start. Was there yeah. a certain day or did it just happen slowly? That's where these like Catholic coaches who's working with have come in. They're like, you need to just do this. And so they've been really, I, I tend to be a very phlegmatic personality. So I need somebody to say like, just jump out of the boat. <laughs> and um. Yeah. So I think it was really then that it said, yeah, let's set a date. And they're like, can you start next weekend or something like that? They're like, I don't know, it was two weekends out or something like that. And I think we did have to move the date at first, but it was just kind of a, a push to, yeah, let's just get it started. You don't need to have it all, all perfect. And you have something valuable to offer people and that God is calling you to do this. So you just need to do it. Hmm. I've so learned to get a little more sensitive to what she discovers, right? I mean, uh, I'm a guy. I don't always listen. And uh, <laughs> comes a time where she has a certain type of discovery where she'll she'll come to something and she'll say, "I really think this." I'm like, "Okay, tell me more." And then she'll often it's a mass thing, and then we go, "Okay, now I'm listening," right? Because it takes <laughs> me a while, right? And but I'm I'm orienting. I'm coming alongside, and then I'm like, "Okay, I get it." and 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 i have to hear it and i have to put my own spin on it it's just the way i am as a guy so mm -hmm. uh, but then we talk about it and we we discuss we may fight it back and forth and then we come to where it's going to go and it's 
But I think that is something we've learned over time too, is that that God will speak to us through our spouses. Cause there's certainly times where where I've had ideas and I'm like, oh, I'm not sure about this. And Colin's like, no, you need to do it. And I'm like, okay, that's God telling me. Right. So <laughs> he definitely uses like this this sacrament uh, to, you know, have his voice heard through through he puts the <laughs> You know, I hadn't even heard the idea and I'm like, okay, I should listen to this. Right. And that was on my heart. And then it's like, okay, I don't know why you didn't just tell me God, but I guess you're going to tell me. <laughs> I guess you can use I don't instruments. Listen, I don't <laughs> yeah. listen as well, right. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Yeah. And okay. Then, but it was a good idea and it was, and it, it does resonate and it's gone, it's gone that way. So you can try something out, which was us trying this out. And it's gone really well. And I think that's because the Holy Spirit is pushing it. And that's part of discernment too, right? You have to take the mm. steps and see what the fruits are. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. My my um spiritual I when I was discerning with the consecrated women, um, I my I had a lovely spiritual director and I was just really struggling about like, where is God calling me? I don't know. I can't see. And she said a, one line to me, which has stayed with me for like, you know, the past 15 years, which is um, like, our Lord can't guide a boat that is anchored in the harbor. Mm -hmm. You have to put out to sea. You've got to go somewhere. Like, and mm -hmm. I think, I mean, I, I've talking to young people nowadays, the, the crippling fear of indecision of mm -hmm like if, but if, but what if I make the wrong choice? What if I set out to see and it's the, like I'm headed in the complete wrong direction. And it's like, the Lord will bless you. That's not how our Lord works. Mm -hmm. He doesn't spite you or curse you for, for making a choice that you chose in his name. Like he will guide you. He will bless your decision. And, and, and like you said, the fruit will follow. I think that is so important that, um, to not be bogged down by fear, but to in, if you, if you are rooted to the vine and you have that close relationship with our Lord, the King, like be it in prayer, in the sacraments, in, um, a close union with him, then he will guide you like to trust his, uh, to trust your relationship with him and the relationship that you have established with him through your life to not be afraid for those decisions. Absolutely. I think that's great. I mean, that's another great analogy. Preparing for battle is an analogy, but preparing for a trip or preparing for a journey that God is sending you on. That's, that's another fantastic analogy. And you're, you're, you're in the heart of it there, right? You have to start moving. And I, I've heard that too, from young men in particular, like not sure, don't want to make a mistake. Mm. And it's like, no, you have to, in my analogy, it's like, well, you have to get into the fight. Would you mm -hmm. rather practice fight or would you rather go right into battle? Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe, maybe get out and learn how to do some of the things, start a spiritual life, start, start having some conflict so that you're not surprised by conflict. Right. Mm -hmm. And you see some young men who are just going for it and they're, they're online, most of them. And and they're they're having big fights, but at least they're trying, right? They're trying to express their faith and and trying to be in the public square. And those are in the modern public square online, uh, and and that's going well, right? Um, whether or not it's perfect, it's not. But journey, right? Nobody's gonna be great. Nobody's gonna be great when they go and try and try out the the way, right? They're not gonna they're not gonna be great on the first five days of the journey, right? Mm -hmm. You have to mm -hmm. you have to jump in, and uh, I love that analogy as well. The analogy of the journey. That's another one. Mm -hmm. So on a practical note, every all our listeners uh, that are listening, I'm sure many of them are are married. How can they get in contact with you? How how could they benefit from this ministry that you all are starting? Yeah, well, we we do have a website. Um, and I can pass that along to you. But yeah, it's holyunionconnect.com. But I, have, I think you have to go to like backslash course right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll put the link. <laughs> yeah. All this stuff. But yeah. We can put the link in there and, and they're actually, so that's where people can sign up for the course. We're running it now, but we're hoping to run it again soon and kind of keep refining it and um, maybe eventually have a recorded course that people could, mm. um, could sign up for as well. But we'll, right now we're going to keep offering it live. We've been enjoying that, that format, but there's also um some meditations that I've recorded on mm. there too. So some meditations for marriage um so 14 days of them so if people want to sign up and receive those those are there and they're um yeah kind of meditations on some of the different themes that that we discuss some of uh, church teaching there's usually like quotes from a saint or encyclical or the bible in there that i'm reflecting on but just also that very 
that psychological kind of relaxation type meditation mm -hmm. flavor to it as well so it really kind of combines the faith and and some kind of somewhat modern but not new age mm -hmm. <laughs> meditation kind of <laughs> that kind of techniques and really like invokes the holy spirit and and walking with christ to explain the emotions is another big big part of it for me just discerning emotions and we've kind mm -hmm. of applied some military perspective on some of that too but i think that's something that we either neglect or don't see as important or 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 scared of things like that so i'm just trying it throughout this whole process too really helping people to be aware that god god gave us our emotions and that they there's we can discern what our emotions are or you know you use that as part of our discernment i guess it's right. it's part of the data or the information that we need to take into account when we're we're discerning things and listening for god's voice mm, absolutely so i if if i may one if you could offer advice to a couple who is really in the throes of discernment uh, either whether it be like a big life decision or um, something's come up at work or in their family, like they're having some sort of family, uh, issues going on. What would be like the one piece of advice that you would pass along to a couple who is just trying to, trying to communicate with each other and discern together? Um, like as, as husband and wife, how does, like, what would you, what would you say to them? I know we've maybe it's because of being a part of Regna Christi, but we've always relied on St. Ignatius's discernment process mm -hmm. too, right? The you know, 11 doors kind of thing. But I, I like how like almost every second step is and then stop and pray <laughs> and pray and pray, right? And so I think that emphasizes how important that prayer is and and the need to slow down to really hear God's voice in, in the, the din of life, right? So, um, so yeah, just it really helps you break it down into small steps that do help you slow down and really consider what God's telling you. And it does have that piece where, yeah, you need to take, make a move and see, see what the fruits of that are as part of the discernment process. I don't know. Would you add to that or. I just make sure that you're, you're making uh, a prayer routine together. And, and the, our foundation was from our marriage. It was just luck luck and the holy spirit uh, <laughs> but when we when we were getting married we we did uh, the consecration um to mary through the hands of uh, to jesus through the hands of mary uh, by saint louis de montfort and we've done that every year and that's mm -hmm. been a that's been a rock for us because if we as we redo it we we reconnect we pull back in and we get our prayer life kind of back on the rails uh it's it's constant uh because the world changes so much and we change so much and we've got a busy a busy life. So it, it does bring us back in and steer us back on course. Then obviously uh, discernment and things like that. Uh, and other than that, I'd say just, just remember that you're the team and you're in the right place and you're, you're the team that God's put together. So you, you have to, you have to turn into each other and you have to, you have to rely mm -hmm. on each other, lean on each other. Yeah. So. And that, that he will support you. He's, he wants you to succeed in your family, right. And that he, he'll be there to help help direct you so yeah it's just, if we can take the time to slow down and listen to his voice he will guide us in the right direction and unite mm -hmm. us awesome awesome well thank you both so much for your time at the at the end of this uh conversation we always just take a moment to give thanks in whatever way um people want to give thanks for for this time together and i always i just um I always marvel at married couples. I often find in them the inspiration from my own vocation as a consecrated woman to to give of myself and love to Jesus and that that love bear fruit. So I just want to say thank you for your yes to your vocation. And what I love about our Regnum Christi family is that we do have all the vocations that we have priests, we have consecrated, and we have these married couples. And I think that... Uh, that we all need each other to mm -hmm. edify our, our own vocations. So I was really looking forward to this conversation because um, I, I just, I always leave, whether we get invited to a family's house or, or we just have conversations, I always leave speaking with married couples feeling so full and so uh, renewed. So I just want to say thank you for, for your vocation that sheds light into my vocation. So that's what I have in my heart at the end of this conversation. 
Oh, Thank you. Appreciate your vocation mm -hmm. and as you're speaking. It reminds me of like how we are all part of the body of Christ, right? And, and Regnum Christi does have so many representations of those parts of the body, right? And if you ever are in Alberta, you are welcome to come. We'll, we'll uh, make waffles and, and yeah, eggs, bag and egg. <laughs> eggs, Benny, and waffles, no problem. Yeah, you're mm. wandering up north and come, come see you for sure. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate you taking the time to converse mm -hmm. with us. And that's one thing we've been learning through this process too, because we've been on a couple other podcasts and just how, how nice it is just to connect with people in this way and just have these conversations. Mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit is evident in these conversations mm -hmm. too. So Yeah, they're important conversations and we wouldn't probably have them unless we were trying to do this. So, you know, that's a gift as well. Mm -hmm. I, I think I just really want to be grateful and give thanks to the Lord for the gift of community. Because like Laura said, like I, I also am very edified and uh, raised up by the example of my brothers and sisters in Christ and how they um, cleave to our Lord in their own way, in their marriage, in their example. It is um, it is incredibly edifying. Uh, even if, I mean, I, I don't know a single perfect married couple. <laughs> I don't know if you guys do. No. I definitely don't. Um, so despite their their failings, it's more the the edification of those who continue to turn to the Lord despite their failings and despite their um their own anxieties and their lack of understanding or lack of direction to be constantly turning back to the Lord. I just I um we as much as our world likes to make us think that we're solitary and alone and isolated, that we, we really do carry each other. And it's through uh, the body of Christ, the strength and the prayers of everyone surrounding us that we are all marching together on this uh, journey to heaven. So I'm very, very grateful for my brothers and sisters in Christ. And for you guys for joining us here around the table. And I think you might need to reconsider that offer for bringing us over for waffles because you don't know Sternhagen people because we can <laughs> eat <laughs> my little boys who are like se my, my seven-year-old and my three-year-old can eat more than I do. So just be prepared. You're going to have to like <laughs> have a lot of well, a lot of eggs and a lot of wheat yeah, if that ever bit, happens. We've had a lot of practice cooking for big crowds so both you know i had a big family we have a big family but like i said we get a lot of people come for our pit okay pit. okay i just had to warn you okay just yeah, to make like sure that you know what you're offering <laughs> bring it on bring it on well thank you both Accepted. so much yeah thank you both so much thank for you. your time and this beautiful conversation and we hope that it's blessed our listeners as well and we will be sure to put all the links in the show notes and that we're praying for for all of you all of you that have listened all of you that if it's touched your heart um that the holy spirit might just continue the good work in your hearts and that you might just follow him on this beautiful adventure of love and know that he has um, all of your happiness and all of your dreams in his own heart and by following him uh, then you will be truly fulfilled in this life so god bless you all